and right now they're just too young to understand. Right now, Dylan just turned six, Logan is three, and Chloe is 18 months old. I want the kids to know who I am, all the ways in which I come to love them, and what I believed. I wish the kids could understand how desperately I don't want to leave them. If you had the chance, would you rather die in your sleep, or would you want the time to say goodbye? Randy Posh faces that challenge with his children when he's given just months to live. But how do you leave a legacy to kids you've just begun to know? The Last Lecture by Randy Posh. My wife and I haven't told them that I'm dying yet. We've been advised that we should wait until I become more symptomatic. And right now, even though I've been given just months to live, I still look pretty healthy. <coughs> and so, my kids remain unaware that in my every encounter with them, I'm saying goodbye. I know their memories of me may be fuzzy. That's why I'm trying to do things with them that will be unforgettable. Dylan and I went on a mini vacation to swim with dolphins. When a kid swims with dolphins, he doesn't easily forget that. I'm going to bring Logan to Disney World, a place I know he'll love the, as much as I did. He'd love to meet Mickey Mouse, and I've met him so I can make the introductions. I'm aware that Chloe may have no memory of me at all. She's too young. But I want her to grow up knowing that I was the first man to ever fall in love with her. I'd always thought the father-daughter thing was overstated, but I can tell you it's real. Sometimes she just looks into my eyes and I become a puddle. I love all three of my kids completely and differently, and I want them to know that as long as they live, I will love them. Lately, I've been making a point to speak to people who've lost their parents when they were very young. I want to know what got them through the hard times, what, keep, what keepsakes they found most meaningful. They told me they found it consoling to learn that their mothers, how their mothers and fathers loved them. The more they knew, the more they could feel the love. These people told me something else, too. Since they have so few memories of their own, they found it reassuring to know that their parents died with great memories of them. To that end, I want my kids to know that memories of them fill my head. Given my limited time, though, I've had time to think about how I might reinforce my bonds with them. So I'm building separate lists of each of my memories of the kids. Let's start with Dylan. I admire how loving and empathetic he is. If another child is hurt, he'll bring over a toy or a blanket. Another trait I see in him is he's analytical, just like his old man. He's already figured out that the questions are more important than the answers. A lot of kids ask, why, why, why? One rule in our house is that you may not ask one word questions. Dylan embraces that idea. He loves to formulate full sentence questions and his inquisitiveness goes beyond his years. I remember his preschool teachers raving about him, telling us that when you're with Dylan, you find yourself thinking, I cannot wait to see what kind of adult this kid turns into. Now Logan, he makes everything an adventure. Once he started moving, he never really stopped. He's just this phenomenal ball of positive energy, completely physical and gregarious. When he smiles, he smiles with his whole face. <coughs> he's the ultimate tigger. He's also the kind of kid who's up for everything and befriends everyone. He's only three years old, but I'm predicting he's going to be the social chair of his college fraternity. Chloe, meanwhile, is a girl. I say that with a bit of awe, because until she came along, I couldn't fathom what that meant. For me, holding Chloe for the first time, looking into this tiny girl's face, well, it was one of the most intense and spiritual moments of my life. There was this connection I felt, and it was different from the ones I had with the boys. I am now a member of the wrapped around my daughter's finger club. Because I've been so vocal about the power of childhood dreams, a lot of people have asked me lately about the dreams I've had for my kids. I have a very direct answer for that. It can be a very disruptive thing for parents to have specific dreams for their children. As a professor, I've seen many unhappy college freshmen picking majors that are all wrong for them. Their parents have set them on a train and 
All too often, judging by the crying during my office hours, the result is a train wreck. Having seen so many students go through my classrooms, I've realized that the parents don't realize the power of their words. Depending on a child's age or sense of self, an offhand comment from mom or dad can feel like a shove from a bulldozer. I'm not even sure if I should have made the reference to Logan growing up to be a social chair of his fraternity, or being a leader at, in his college, or anything like that. As I see it, a parent's job is to encourage kids to develop a joy for life, a great urge to follow their own dreams. The best we can do is help them develop a personal set of tools for the task. So my dreams for my kids are very exact. I want them to find their own path to fulfillment. And given that, I won't be there for them. I want to make this clear. Kids, don't try to figure out what I want you to become. I want you to become what you want to become. Their life will be their life. I would just urge my kids to find their way with enthusiasm and passion. And I want them to feel as if I'm there with them, whatever path they may choose.